We are so excited to be here. He is like a kid in a rocket store. And she, store she has been jumping up and down too. We are both geeks at heart and we are here at South Padre Island. That right behind us is SpaceX's Starbase where they build and are launching in just a few, less than two, two hours, hours from now. Two hours from now, Flight 7 of the Starship. This is this one because Starship 7 is the biggest one they built. This is, means this is the largest object ever launched off of Earth, ever in history. This is the biggest rocket ever launched, bigger than a Saturn V, bigger than anything else. And the booster, the bulk of it is going to come back and land in little chopsticks and be caught. It's going to be crazy. Staying on the path that I've chosen straight up. Come my way and I'll see you at the top. Yes, the excitement is high. Now, we have been down here in South Padre Island. We are at Isla or is it Isla Blanca? Isla Blanca, yeah. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, but we have been here for over a week. This launch was supposed to have gone off last Friday, and then it got delayed to Monday, then well, Wednesday, yeah. and then now it's Thursday, a week later than we arrived. Uh, we kept we, extending, extending. Yes. You, you, I think you've gotten to know the, uh, the clerk at the uh, campground office. They just, hi, Chris. Yeah, extend one more day. Oh, <laughs> All right. Yep, and we, we managed to get in here. We actually, when we booked here just a week in advance, we got the very last spot available on Sardine Row to get in here. So we were very lucky that we were able to get a campsite here because this park, this, this county park here is front row. You yes. see everything. And it is a park that's been here for a while. There's like 600 RV sites, and uh, most of them are seasonal this time of year. You can book them at a month at a time, and they get booked up months in advance. So that we're able to get in it all was amazing, and that they can keep extending has been great. <laughs> so we're hoping it actually goes off tonight because we only have one night left on our extension <laughs> for, to refry for tomorrow. But we decided to come down here. We were up in the Austin area before this when we did our last video, um, visiting family for the holidays, and then enjoyed some wonderful time in Austin. And uh, he had been watching that this launch was happening, and we decided we had no other plan, so why not? It's yeah, it's a it's a it's a fairly long detour because Texas is friggin' big, both east to west and north to south, and to get all the way down to the south tip of Texas is far. Um, and we've never, but it was we've never explored this part of Texas before, so that was part of the fun of it. Is let's go explore. The and, Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, this yeah. is Texas's tropical getaway. You know, the farthest south part of Texas tropics you know this is where all the winter texans show up and stay warm and this well, is the first sun we've seen all week yeah. <laughs> it, it has, has been freaking been cold <laughs> cold and miserable we've been actually windy with, yeah freezing weather almost it's, it's been some of the worst weather they've had here in years and um and great time to be here cooped up in a van and fortunately we were actually cheering for the scrub yesterday because yesterday you, can see you could time. just slightly see the base of the tower. You couldn't even see the pad across the channel here. Yeah, um, so this is not our campsite. This is one of the parking, uh, areas. parking areas. We woke up at 6 this morning as soon as the gates opened and moved over here and got a front row seat. So we're super blessed for that. And then we took a nap because we were up <laughs> last night watching the Blue Origin wa launch over in Cape Canaveral. A live stream of that, yeah. So, <laughs> so they're, they're, they're biggest rocket ever on the, their side. and. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening in the space world. We've, we're covering the, the, all these developments over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We've got a, another video. The significance video. of this. Um, yes. So yes, we just filmed a video talking about the significance of this particular launch and the Pez dispenser for the new Starlink V3 satellites that will be going up and how that will impact Starlink service. So go to the Mobile Internet Resource Center and geek out there if that is your jam. We're here just to share the excitement <laughs> personally of being here. Uh, when we first arrived on last Thursday, we actually went down Texas Highway Road 4, Highway I think, four. Um, to Starbase itself. And yeah, what's super cool about Starbase is it, it is built right on a public road that goes to a public beach. That you drive down this route, this road is trashed because of all the heavy trucks that keep coming down this because, and all the beachgoers that go down. and. You drive down to this beach, it just dead down to the road, and it just dead ends okay. on the beach with the rocket pad and all the fueling infrastructure and everything right next to you with no fence, no security, no nothing. You are parking right next to the fuel trucks. You're parking in the midst of everything. And 
space nerds, space geeks, all of these oh, people are just lining up and down, squeezing in. So we thought to... we would just like drive by <laughs> and just say hi, walk out, get the snapshot of the the rocket behind us. We ended up staying out there almost all afternoon because then the Starship was uh, in its chopstick thingies and had not yet been lifted for full stack. Not so, lifted on top of the booster. And all the space nerds were like, they're going to do it any moment, any moment, any moment. <laughs> And we knew we needed to get over here for our campground reservation by 6 o'clock. But it was so fun to hang out there, walk on the beach. You can actually walk on a little trail behind the launch pad. And as long as there's no fence, it's just little purple stakes every so often that mark the property line. Don't cross the purple stakes or you might get in trouble. There's literally nothing in between us and the base there's, of there's salt. a little salt flat. No fence, no gate, no nothing. <laughs> There's like, we could like stare right up the bottom of a rocket. You're just having a great day. <laughs> this, is, this is like magic land here. This is like, yeah, the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for space nerds. It's, uh, that's why there's a lot of space nerds swarming around on these sand dunes. It's pretty fun. Well, mostly it's just the, the space geeks all enforce it to each other. It's like, don't ruin it for all of us. Don't don't make them force them to have to close this whole area off. But you could just walk right behind the pads. You can walk right past the fuel trucks. You can walk all around and just stay outside of the private property zone. There's no fence. You could see everything. It is awe-inspiring to be that close to yes. such miracles of engineering. We did not get to see the full stack that close up. It didn't happen until after we left. Uh, we did. We were tempted. You, you can stay overnight there as long as the roads aren't closed. We were tempted just to ditch our campground reservation here and stay, <laughs> stay overnight for it. Yes. That would have been pretty awesome. Yes, they, they, they only kick people out when they're doing an active test, like you know the, the wet dress rehearsal or, well, they kick you away for the launch. So they kicked everybody out uh, earlier this morning because they're going to launch. Yep. So this is one of the places this is one of the top places here at this campground, um, this state county park, uh, where the space nerds do hang out and watch it because this is about as close as you can see it, other than if you are going to Rocket Ranch's observatory. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple places that have some private land that, that allow boondocking and camping that are over on the Highway 4 side that are physically a little bit closer. But here on the um, end of uh, South Padre Island, um, you get a really great view across the water, right to the pad, yeah. right there. We can see the base of the pad. We can see the bottom of the rocket to the top, and we're going to see it get caught and come back and land. And oh, it's going to be. We amazing. hope so. We, we hope so. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. Don't count your it launches is, before they go. It is a test flight. <laughs> <laughs> and we've scrubbed can many times already, but yes. we're excited. Yeah, so we have been here for over a week. I am glad we came here because there is actually a lot to do right around here. You, there's great biking lanes to up and down the island. A lot of great dining options yes. here on South Padre. Ceviche, ceviche. Uh, mahi mahi mix was, was amazing. Good. Oh, those French fries were just oh, yeah. just delicious, and the, the mahi was great. Um, just yeah. just great dining. Yummies was great. Yeah, yummies. There's a sea sounds... turtle Inc is here, so there's like the world's largest sea turtle hospitals being built. Long time like preservation. Yeah, this is where the basically here. Kemp's Ridley sea turtle was almost going to go extinct until the efforts started right here on this island and with this group. So they've done amazing work on turtle conservation. Um, so yeah, it, we've just been. Able to get out, explore around here by bike. There's a free shuttle service that'll take you around the island as well and over to Port Isabel for reprovisioning, take you right to the grocery <laughs> stores. So but it's a great place to be to have amenities, have full hookups because when we're in small van, that's important. Small van when it's freaking cold outside. So yeah. all this actually, all these outside things would have been much more fun if we had not been like having to put on four layers and bundle up for a bike ride every yeah. so often. But we did manage to get our exercises in every day and we did. Yeah, there's a beach, a the great beach. feature. So we did a couple moments months of sunshine this is like one of the first extended sunshine we've had yes. since we've been here but be able to walk the beach here so it's been great to be here um and be down here in this apparently even though it's been really freaking miserable it's been one of the warmer spots in the country so, yes, so you know it's hard to complain okay yeah january 2025 has been a cold one so yeah. we are just yeah, an hour and 50 minutes from the launch right now. We've got lawn chairs out front. We've got a view from here. We've got the live streams from all the different uh, uh, websites that are covering this and SpaceX's live stream as well, all ready to go. And is this going to be... Well, the, the one thing they say on SpaceX's website is excitement guaranteed. And it's well, already pretty exciting. Yes. I mean, anything can happen. We could like come back and say, oh... It could be a scrub. It, no more scrubs. We don't want no scrubs. But, um, or, you know, it could be a... Yeah, could be. it's a test flight, so anything yep. can happen. Yes. <laughs> Rapid unscheduled disassembly. It's yeah, a, that's what yeah. they call it. And, yeah. you know, which would actually 
Yeah, those are kind of cool to watch too. So <laughs> let's, not, let's not hold that. Anyway, um, if you would like to learn more about this launch and what it means for Starlink, head on over to the Mobile Internet Resource Center channel. That is our day job, uh, where we have a bunch more geeky content on that side of it. Yeah, and this this launch is the beginning of a new era of Starlink. So if you're not paying attention, this is the beginning of something very exciting for Starlink's evolution. All right. Hopefully, I will be ending this video with some footage of that thing going up. Fingers crossed. Toes crossed. Cheer. Wow, that was amazing. It was absolutely mind-blowing. Unfortunately, there was a rod with the Starship. We didn't get to see it. It happened a thousand miles downrange just before the Starship. The top part got into space. It exploded spectacularly. There's some incredible footage of it coming down in the Turks and Caicos as millions of glowing pieces. Not so good for the Starlink test, which did not happen. But the booster, oh my God, the booster. The, the launch and the booster return went off flawlessly and we got to witness that. So everything we got to see was amazing. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, the booster coming back right over our heads and just coming down and uh, down and but, down. But, but first, before the booster has to launch and- The launch, the now, bubble. Context, I lived on the Space Coast for over a decade before I met this one and hit the road. We have spent a lot of time on the Space Coast. We have watched many, many launches up close, far away. Nothing I have ever witnessed. And I've seen Delta IVs and, you know, countless space, space shuttles, shuttles and, and things like that. Nothing that I have seen before compared to this. The bigger the rocket, the bigger the rumble. And oh, when that rumble hits and that something the size of a skyscraper is just slowly moving up into the sky and the rumble hits you and the crowd goes wild and oh my gosh. Yeah, so yeah, you know, when I lived on the Space Coast, I lived about 20, 25 miles south of the actual launch pads at Cape Canaveral. And I was used to like the rumble was something you heard after you could no longer see the rocket. And unless you were really close, did you get that rumble feeling like Shaking as you're you. still watching it and you know, our camera shook as you're going and lost focus. It was just so incredible. And, you know, this blue flame carrying the, the rocket up into space. And then it splits. Like... The Starship goes off to its eventual rud. Poor S-33, we miss you. You did a good job. Well, no, you didn't. But, um, <laughs> but, okay, we miss you. Better try next time. But the booster came back. And seeing a building, a giant skyscraper, falling towards you and then hover and stop and then drift into these little waiting arms and get caught. And just as it gets caught, the sonic booms hit. Yeah, yeah it's pretty friggin' exciting. So, oh! Oh my! <laughs> oh! Got this! You got this! Yeah! Oh my God. Whoa. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the, the footage. It doesn't do it justice to being in person. Nothing ever could. Um, so if you are a space nerd or even think you might like just space stuff. Or if you, you just like loud noises. If you have the opportunity to come down here, it is definitely worthwhile doing. No idea how much longer they'll be able to keep Starbase open so you can get up close and personal like we were able to. I hope it's for a while because that's an incredible experience. I think hanging out for a day with Starship 
We actually had lunch right here with Starship right out our window. Mm -hmm. Made me feel an extra loss for Starship. Yes, yeah, for S33. <laughs> but, uh, you know, S34 and the next booster, they're already built and they already think they've identified what caused the RUD. And so it's, Elon's saying it might just be a month or two before they're ready to go again. So <laughs> we'll catch more of these. They are building a pad in Cape Canaveral. There's going to be lots and lots more opportunities to see Starship around. Um, definitely worthwhile. Have some flexibility because you know it's space. schedule. It's space. Schedules. Yeah. But yeah, amazing experience. This is right up there with going to see the eclipse. It totally blows your mind. Your mind can't process something that big flying. Um, so yeah, it's incredible and highly recommended. And well, yep, and no idea what we're doing from here. So yeah. we'll see you down the road. Take care. We create these videos just for fun, and we love having you along for the ride. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time!